Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith Jehovah God, Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers, and commit ye whoredom after their abominations? When you offer your gifts, when you make your sons pass through the fire, ye pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day. And shall I be inquired of of you, O house of Israel, as I live, saith Jehovah God, I will not be inquired of by you. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all, that ye say, We will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries, to serve wood and stone. Let's see, that's the problem. They wanted to be like the other nations. They didn't want to be God's people. They said, can we be like the heathen? Please, get away from us. So God divorced them. He let them go. Now they complain. They, they didn't, they, they, it's like a man that had a, a Christian man that has a wife and she says, I don't want to be Christian. I want to be like the world. I want to play around. I want to fool around with the guys. Can you let me go? So what is he going to do? Hit her? Knock her around a few times? Yeah, well God knocked Israel around a few times. But he finally just divorced her because she was an unfaithful harlot. Now what we got going in the world today, we hear of a attack upon Iran and all that. We've heard about it for a long time. We've heard about, uh, is this going to mean World War III? Because China says uh, they're ready to go to war. Russia says you go a little farther and that's all you're going to go. Is this talked about in the Bible, these end times, the, the, what would happen in this time? World War Three, so to speak. Well, yeah. In, in, in uh, the book of Daniel, the 11th chapter. It says... Uh, um... At the time of the end shall the king of the south push it him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen, with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries and overflow and pass over. Uh, he, verse, verse 42, it says, He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. Um, in verse um, verse 44 it says but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him well China is in the east and, the, and Russia is in the north Therefore he should go forth with great fury to destroy, and utterly to make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas, in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. You should read this whole chapter 11 here. But uh, especially the end here. Um, Tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Israel today works with the United States. The United States is its, is its military arm to a great extent. They have nuclear weapons, but they rely mostly on the armies of the United States. Um, uh, the uh, tidings out of the north and out of the east <clears throat> shall trouble him. The United States will suffer a sword stroke. As the seventh head of the beast that we read in the Revelation, it, see, it suffers a sword stroke. Let's turn there to Revelation uh, 13th chapter, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, it says... Uh,
verse 3 of 13. It says, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. That would be the last head, because it says, And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. So the seventh head of the, the beast, there are seven heads, and uh, five were, one is, the other has not yet arrived. That would be the one, the, the uh, United States would be the last one that had not yet arrived. The superpower of the world. It suffers a sword stroke. No doubt, probably from uh, Russia and China. But that he, that sword stroke is healed. And all the world wonders after the beast. The seventh headed beast is the political organizations. And, and the eighth king is actually all of the, the nations together. The new world order, the global government. This actually comes to life after the seventh head receives his... Uh, Sword stroke. Verse 4 says, And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. That's the devil. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, and who is able to make war with him? And there was a mouth give, and there was a, given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Yeah. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. <clears throat> So we turn back to Daniel 11th chapter. These blasphemies is what Paul spoke about when uh, Satan sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. The man of sin, the son of perdition. Uh, in verse 45 of the 11th chapter of Daniel it says, He shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Those are the, the temple of God. Those are the, the seas are part of the temple where they washed uh, the things having to do with sacrifices. And the glorious holy mountain, that's Mount Zion, where the temple is. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. Yes. And how does that happen? Well, in, in chapter 12, and at that time Michael shall stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as was never since there was a nation even to that time. Jesus Christ talked about this. The greatest, the great tribulation is called. And he said, unless those days were cut short, no flesh would be saved. But let's read in, in uh, Revelation again, the, the 12th chapter. Verse 7, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fall, fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. That's when, that, that's when the devil sits down in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. When he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. And at that time, Michael stands up. That's when the, the devil is kicked out of heaven. And then this, and then it, it then, uh, it's, it speaks about, at that time thy people shall be delivered. Jesus Christ says, when you see these things, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Every one that shall be found written in the book. And then it speaks about the resurrection that Jesus taught and demonstrated. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life. And some to, to shame and everlasting contempt. The judgment day, the thousand year long reign of Christ is the judgment day. So yes, but isn't it interesting in, in Daniel the 11th chapter that we see the tidings out of the east and out of the north to trouble him. And he goes forth in great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. So we see it shaping up now.
all this, these wars and all these countries that they get into. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over with Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, now Iran, or the talk of Syria, and so on. China and Russia don't like it. These tidings out of the east and out of the north are going to trouble him. So he's going to put forth this big effort and the, and, and the seventh head of the beast receives a sword stroke. Not fatal. He is healed. But he receives that sword stroke. And then all the world wonder after the beast and he sets his palace over there in Jerusalem with blasphemies saying that he is God and this as at this same time this is when Satan is hurled down and he sits in that throne and Michael will stand up and there will be a persecution of God's people but he who touches you touches the apple of my eye says Jehovah and he will go and call and cause them to turn on one another. The great, great time of trouble. And there will be nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The whole world will be in conflagration. And there will be pestilence and famines as Jesus spoke of. This great time of trouble, this time of the end is yet to come. And by the wild beasts of the earth, it says in Revelation. And it also speaks of, in Ezekiel, those four things. The sword, the famine, the pestilence, and by the wild beasts of the earth. And that's the exact language of Revelation. Is it the sixth chapter, I believe? And... Um, yeah, the sixth chapter. And this is this shows you that many people think that these signs have already occurred, but they have not. You know, I mean, they think World War I was the beginning of the, those things. In a sense, you could say that, but this is this, when God punishes a people, He doesn't have World War I, and then we live in a time of peace and plenty, and this country, and they were all rich. This famines and pestilences and sword happens as a destruction, not a stop and a start thing. This is the final three and a half years of tribulation, whereas no flesh was saved. We haven't hit that yet. We haven't begun that. But when it does, you'll know it. And you will be in this, the pangs of distress will hit all mankind. And God alone himself will be exalted in that day.